In part A, we're supposed to find the reflection coefficient using the Smith chart. So if we're going to use the Smith chart, we have to first normalize the load impedance, which is capital ZL over Z0, which gives us 100 minus J100 over 100. And simplifying, we get 1 minus J. So this is R plus Jx. So we see we're going to have to find the intersection of the R equal 1 circle and the X equals minus 1 arc. So that's done here. We have the R equal 1 circle. And because it's negative for impedances, it's in the bottom half of the Smith chart. And this is the X equals minus 1 arc. So we've plotted here is where they intersect, and that is ZL. Then we can mm, measure the distance from ZL to the center of the Smith chart using a ruler. And we can measure the same distance at the bottom of the Smith chart. Remember, we're using the reflection coefficient E or I scale. Measure that same distance along this scale, so starting from here, which is 0. And if we do that, here is a better graph. We've measured from the center of the Smith chart to ZL, and that same distance along this scale, and we get the reflection coefficient magnitude is 0 0.46. And finally, we can obtain the angle of the reflection coefficient also by reading off a value from the Smith chart. So here is ZL still. If we draw a straight line out from the center of the Smith chart through ZL out to the outside of the Smith chart, we can use the inner scale here, angle of reflection coefficient in degrees. So if we follow that scale around and we read off the value that we have on that scale where this line goes through it, we should get the angle of the reflection coefficient is 90, minus 62 degrees.